I welcome all of you to the classes for the academic year 2022. So, this class today being a first day and uh, what we have done is for you all the classes live or recorded whatever might be, it will be there within your app itself. So, you need not search for a link or anything. In the speed learning app itself, in the class schedule, you will have whatever the class you need to uh, attend with the schedule, it will be posted there. So, you can just straight attend there and uh, you can go ahead with the class directly and the same class will be edited and posted in the uh, sessions uh, as a recorded videos. So, it will be very clear for you. Okay. And whatever the doubts you want to ask, you need not search for the WhatsApp group or a Telegram group or a Facebook, nothing. In the forum, the next option, the button is the forum. You can type your doubts there and the respective faculties will clear your doubts. So, everything uh, in the app itself, you will be able to do uh, whatever uh, is your requirement, it will be fulfilled there. So, that is what uh, is the plan about. And before we could start for the upcoming year, before we could start for the upcoming year, I just wanted to go through what are the questions which are asked in the recent exam of uh, NEET SS uh, 2022 and uh, there were almost two papers, two general surgery papers and um, and this two general surgery papers, almost 80 questions and out of that today, whatever we can discuss, we will discuss today and one thing which I want to tell you, we had a preparation for one and a half years, almost one and a half years the last exam. Yes, that is what I am giving you for the newcomers and freshers because I have very clearly told all my students who have been studying for one and a half years to take a break and not to attend classes and not to uh, be there in any of the system until their results are out because they have been through a hectic and heavy process for past one and a half years. They have to completely relax and that is my uh, advice to them. And so that after the results, we will discuss and decide what to do next. Okay. And and all will qualify and all will get the seat of the choice and the rank of the judge. I am very confident because there is an extraordinary work and a tremendous work for one and a half years. They will definitely get the due reward for their work. I am very sure. Next. So, one and a half years we have been discussing almost three days in a week of general surgery and almost two to three days of a speciality. Whatever we have discussed and whatever we have observed, though the question paper was tough and was not equally distributed, still we are able to cover more than 95 percent of the paper, more than 95 percent of the paper because all the references uh, which I have got for this NEET SS uh, 2022 recall general surgery is only from uh, the references from what we have discussed from Bailey and Subistan and little on Schwartz. So, whatever we have taken, I have taken the, the explanation only from the classes which we have taken that I am going to discuss it today. So, that will give you a very clear idea where are the questions picked up from, where are the lines <laughs> page to page and I will clearly show uh, that to you so that you will have a very good idea. That means, no question paper can go out of a preview if you are very systematic and disciplined, but uneven distribution is little unacceptable and um, and unfortunate. I do not know there is would be some mistake that they have mixed up with the pediatric surgery paper in general surgery. But though they have mixed up also, we have discussed pediatric surgery in every speciality from Bailey and Schwartz. So, that predominantly covers more than 95% of the paper. That is that, what I was telling, telling students. If you are disciplined in any kind of paper, you can attend. So, we will just go through and see what all uh, uh, what all questions asked and uh, what are the answers given to be given and where they are taken from. So, that is a idea and this idea will give us uh, insight for the future preparation or the upcoming preparation. Okay, Very clear. So, you see this question, this question was asked. So, this question was apple peel atresia. So, what was the answer you gave in the exam? So, most of you answered this option C. Yes, excellent. That is the right answer. So, options were 3A and 3B, or well, 3A and 3B were given. Yeah, you see, there are uh, two uh, set of paper which has been used for specialities. So, definitely, uh, there will be some additional questions for benefit. So, 
it is 3 and uh, you see this page and this is a substance page number 1856 substance 1856 21st edition see the 21st edition when you, when you when you go through the explanation yes plain abdominal radiograph shows multiple uh, dilated bowel loops indicating a congenital bowel obstruction jejunal atresia type 1 to type 4 or depicted in particular type 3b demonstrates apple peel type of atresia with a large mesenteric gap okay so type 3b so type 3b is called apple peel atresia is it okay now i will tell you i will recall i will recall this there was a confusion now type 3b is very very clear and this very same question we discussed in the class between apple peel atresia christmas tree pattern type 1 to type 4 and then we had a confusion here and this was after the class this was discussed uh, with the images in the whatsapp group and telegram group the same very same question so it is very much in substance 21st edition uh, very very uh, clear and uh, you remember this this question very question was discussed and uh, there were some mistakes made in, uh, made during the discussion and this was corrected after the class so you need to understand the questions do not jump out of the standard textbooks that's a very very uh, will not jump out of the context or out of the standard textbooks okay let me go to the next question so if if the options had if the options had 3a and 3b and you should choose and you should definitely choose uh, the answer to be the answer to be 3b is it okay blood loss in class 2 shock i'll tell you i would have discussed this question minimum of six times before the exam in the class yes in every revision in every revision we used to have this question so all of you what did you answer and those who have not answered your answer should be option c so classification of shock is an important entrance exam question and definitely a question will be asked here and uh, it has been almost repeated in every model exams of speed learning app and definitely it is given in Bailey and Lau 27th edition page number 19 very very clear page number 19 says class 1 class 2 class 3 and class 4 and the traditional classification of hemorrhagic shock is the blood volume loss at a percentage less than 15 percent is class 1 15 to 20, 30 percent is class 2 30 to 40 percent is class 3 and more than 40 percent is class 4 is it clear children with a congenital lingual hernia age of repair the same topic was discussed in a different options different options not this set of option but when i read the explanation you will definitely recall what we discussed so most of you would have given us an answer option c yes option c so the options were the same so let me give you according to the reference and this reference has already been discussed in the class 18 months is an answer of the options given here now bailey and love very clearly says when you when you go through bailey and love the ideal time for inguinal hernia repair in premature infants has recently come under scrutiny <coughs> historically most uh, advocated hernia repair prior to the hospital discharge that means once you diagnosed however due to concerns of potential complication including long term risk of neurodevelopment and delay with general anesthesia a delay in repair may be a better treatment strategy there are ongoing multi institutional studies evaluating the time of infant inguinal hernia repair when elective repair may be deferred until a post operative apnea decreases the risk at one year of age one year of age an incarcerated inguinal hernia should be reduced first and then repair should be performed 24 to 48 hours later when the shock tissue edema subsides a non-reducible incarcerated hernia is a surgical emergency a contralateral inguinal exploration at the time of symptomatic hernia repair is routinely performed based on the high incidence of contralateral patent process vaginalis that is seen in 4 to 65 percent of cases however the issue regarding the routine exploration of the asymptomatic contralateral site in toddlers remains unresolved so most pediatric surgeons 
explore asymptomatic contralateral side in children 2 years of age or younger. So, this is for contralateral. But here, the question that was asked is a congenital hernia. What is the age of repair? That means the involved side. So, among the options given here, the initial traditional way it was followed was, yes, followed was once diagnosed. And most of the congenital hernias are seen in premature individuals. Yes, yes. Most of the congenital hernias, unilateral congenital hernias are seen in premature babies. The very same controversy and discussion were there in during the regular class also. At the time, the same was discussed. So, the right answer will be among the options given here, it will be 18 months. That means later than one year. Is it okay? Acceptable, not acceptable. Contralateral side, you do at two years. On the same side, after one year, we don't have one year. The next best option is 18 months. That's the reason why I have chosen 18 months. So, this is very much given in Bailey and Love in 27th edition. Okay. And the same will be available for you in the app also. You can also go through that. Whenever you are free, you will also be able to go through that. Now, timing of orchidopexy in undescended testis. I agree more than 30 questions out of 40 in general surgery or from pediatric surgery. I don't know why it was an unbalanced paper. Why should they give so many questions in pediatric surgery? I don't know. 10 questions are from trauma and the rest of 30 questions are from pediatric surgery. Different aspects of pediatric surgery. I think nobody will make a mistake here. There is a universal answer, the timing of orchidopexy. That's why I said there are two papers which have been rotated for all the other specialties for 40 of general surgery. So, you will get your question as we move on. So, the right answer is 6 to 9 months. See, Bailey and Love, 27th edition, the page number is wrongly printed for 19 here. To optimize the spermatogenesis, testis needs to be in a scrotum below the core temperature at a young age. Orchidopexy around 6 to 12 months of age is currently recommended. Fertility after orchidopexy for a unilateral undescended testis is near normal. Men with a history of bilateral intraabdominal testis are often infertile. Okay? Is it, is it clear for all of you? So, it is very, very clear. The timing of orchidopexy in undescended testis is 6 to 9 months. Undisputed answer of the options given here. Right? SIRS, which of the following is not a component? You tell me what is the answer you gave? WBC count of 12,000, heart rate more than 80, respiratory rate more than 20, temperature less than 36. It should be, heart rate should be more than 90. So, the right answer here should be option B. Right answer is option B. So, Bailey and Love, 27th edition, page number 51. Very, very clearly says the definition of a systemic inflammatory response syndrome, SIRS and sepsis. Hypothermia more than 38 degree. Yeah, this we have discussed multiple times. Hyperthermia more than 38 degree centigrade or hypothermia less than 36 degree. Tachycardia more than 90 per minute. No beta blockers or tachypnea more than 20 per minute. White cell count more than 12 into 10 to the power of 9 per liter or less than 4 into 10 to the power of 9 per liter. I'll tell you more than 90 percent of the questions were asked from Bailey and Subistan, more than 90 percent. The references are very, very clear. The minute you will be able to see this, right? The, the minute you see the table exactly and most of the questions were from tables that we that we took in the last one month. Most of the questions were from tables and images. Infant with anorectal malformation passing meconium in the urine on perineal examination only, one opening was found. What is the treatment? Oh, next step was asked, is it? Okay, we, we will change it. Next step. So, no next step, is it? Best treatment was asked. <laughs> Okay, so next step was not asked. So, best treatment was asked. Okay, you tell me. What is the best treatment? It's a treatment only. It's not the next step. Okay, next treatment 
whatever might be next treatment is also means the same tell me what next so what kind of anomaly is this hello what kind of anomaly is this only one opening is there it's a cloacal anomaly correct so it's a common chamber anomaly genito urinary reproductive excreted system will all open into one common chamber and thereby get excreted fully correct so cloacal anomaly is type of high anomaly or low anomaly it's a high anomaly so low anomaly you generally do on anoplasty correct low anomalies you will definitely try to do a stenotic anus imperforate anus ectopic anus yes membrane covering the anus these are low anomalies you will try to do a low anomaly low treatment I mean anoplasty single stage procedures but whenever there is a high anomaly you do a stage procedure so a staged procedure will involve a temporary colostomy so answer should be colostomy here and it is same as given in bailey and love and uh, the page number a little different and i will just give you the appropriate page number the anus is either imperforate or replaced by the fistula which does not pass through the muscle complex and opens away from the specialized skin which represents the true anal site the sacrum and genito urinary tract are, are often abnormal the boys there may be a retroperitoneal fistula but most commonly an anomaly is an imperforate anus with a rectobulbar fistula in in girls the commonest anomalies are the fistulas opening into the posterior vestibule behind the vagina or the perineum cloacal malformation in which the rectum and genito urinary tract share a common outflow channel also are also seen in girls where there is a fistula meconium can be passed and can be diagnosed diagnosis can be delayed for months because of the perineum uh, has not been inspected carefully see that word to word and most low malformations are treated anoplasty treated by anoplasty soon after the birth higher and more complex defects need a temporary colostomy detailed investigation reconstructive surgeries okay now you can understand where is this question picked up from hello by going through a bailey are you able to have a feel that where is this question asked from yes exact same words same norman culture everything was used from this paragraph is it okay is the answer acceptable if not acceptable tell me if it not acceptable and uh, a sigma dystomy was a different question i will discuss that later this is the rectal prolapse acceptable na okay so if it is acceptable we'll move on to the next question two year old child with a lump abdomen orbital ecchymosis high blood pressure very simple often repeated question and discuss question it was in your paper not in was in your paper just forget it these are potential questions that you remember <laughs> okay any time can be asked the answer is neuroblastoma bailey in love 27th edition yes wimps tumor and neuroblastoma are our favorite topic of discussions 846 neuroblastoma is a malignant tumor that is derived from the sympathetic nervous system in adrenal medulla 38% and from any site along the sympathetic chain or paravertebral sites abdomen 30% chest 20% and rarely neck and pelvis predominantly newborn infants and young children less than 5 years of age are affected symptoms are caused by tumor growth or by bone metastasis patient presents with mass in the abdomen see that word to word mass in the abdomen or neck or the chest proptosis yes bone pain painless or bluish skin metastasis painless bluish skin metastasis see that weakness or paralysis metastatic disease is present in 70% of patients at presentation okay and you know that among the options given here among the options given here neuroblastoma is one which causes high bp was a high bp was there neuro option wilms tumor very rarely can produce hypertension but neuroblastoma is one pediatric tumor that can produce hypertension correct what is the position patient should be placed in case of air embolism this was a revision question four weeks before the exam we discussed this very same question duran position <laughs> okay so the right answer for this question is all of you are right 
an option is very clear left lateral decubitus view with head down left lateral decubitus view with head down again from Bailey and Lau page number 956 27th edition very clearly says treatment of air embolism is to put the patient in a head down trend and percussion the same explanation I read for you also previous before the exam to encourage air in, enter into the veins in the lower part of the body the patient should also be placed in the left side to help air to float in the ventricular apex and away from the ostium of the pulmonary artery. In extreme cases, air may be aspirated from the heart through a needle introduced below the left costal margin. Tendenberg procedure, Tendenberg, left side, okay, head down. Very clear, huh? So, you should complete Bailey. So, Bailey is a must. Subistin 21st edition is a must, line to line. I am telling you, line to line. Whatever might be the speciality, more preference given. Okay? Any mistake is there? Correct. It should be C here. I am sorry. So, the option should be C. Correct. Thank you. Okay. A patient with undescended testis on one side, with the contralateral testis normal, what is the next step in investigation? So, undescended testis on one side, with the contralateral testis being normal, how you should proceed? Okay. The right answer is, Exploration and anesthesia and proceed. Now, Subistant 21st edition, page number 1870. Okay. A child with a unilateral cryptorganism should have a surgical correction of the problem. The operation is typically performed through a combined groin and scrotal incision. Cord vessels are fully mobilized and testicles are placed in daughter's pouch within the scrotum. An inguinal hernia often accompanies a cryptorchid testis. This should be repaired at the time of orchidopexy. Okay. So, there is a algorithm which is given, the management of non-palpable undescended testis. Okay, unilateral non-palpable, bilateral non-palpable. Okay. So, if it is going to be a unilateral non-palpable laparoscopy and uh, you should see a blind ending vessel, monarchia, plus or minus, excise the remnant. Vessel existing in the internal ring, Inguinal exploration, orchidopexy. Okay. And inguinal exploration, if the testis is non viable, orchidectomy. Laparoscopy, intra abdominal testis, go for orchidectomy. Intra abdominal testis, Fowler Stephens, orchidopexy, laparoscopy are open. Suppose it is a bilateral, non palpable, give SCG, no response. Anarchia, increase testosterone, increase FSH in LH, laparoscopy plus or minus exploration. So, I will just go through this. Unilateral, non-palpable, which will be appropriate for this question asked. Do a laparoscopy and see whether it is a blind ending vessel or vessel existing in the internal ring or intra-abdominal testis. Those are the three options which could be there. It is going to be a blind ending vessel, which could be a monarchia. Okay. Vessels existing in the internal ring and either you should plan Viable orchidopexy, non viable orchidectomy. It's going to be an intra abdominal testis. Then, then you should see viability and plan accordingly. Orchidectomy only if it is not viable. Ultrasound, you cannot identify anything. Exploration here, it means a laparoscopy only. Because laparoscopy is not there. Mostly we do laparoscopy only. Exploration and anesthesia is laparoscopy and proceed. That is the closest option. Because there is nowhere you will do an MRI or ultrasound. X-ray abdomen blood is nothing you will see. Ultrasound also nothing you will see. MRI cannot do anything. What MRI can give you? It will be seen like an another, another soft tissue. So, it has to be only a laparoscopy and proceed. Here the appropriate answer that says exploration and anesthesia doesn't mean that is an open surgery. Okay. Ultrasound cannot even tell you whether the testis is there or not. Yes. It cannot even tell you that. Whether palpable or non-palpable doesn't matter. Mostly, mostly, it is taken as non-palpable. Non-palpable. That's the reason why it is called undescended testis. Because it is being, with the contralateral testis normal, whether it is palpable or non-palpable is not mentioned here. Yeah, yeah, the gist, whatever we should proceed, further is uh, exploration and anesthesia. Whether it is in the 
scrotum or intra-abdominal or inguinal ring, wherever it is, it has to be examined. See, I will tell you, either you do laparoscopy or HCG. This is what it is done. You never do an MRI. You show me a reference where you have done an MRI and ultrasound for an undescended testis. We will drop the case here. It is laparoscopy, laparoscopy and laparoscopy. Yeah, yeah. The examination and anesthesia is laparoscopy only. I am here to completely convince you. If not, I will not move on to the next question for sure. Is it okay? Is this answer acceptable or not acceptable? Shall we move on to the next question? Okay. Segment not included in right hepatectomy. 101 times it has been done. Segment 4 comes under left lobe, right? Only extended right hepatectomy will include segment 4. So, it is a straightforward question. So, we are not moving into the details. And Bailey and Law very clearly says 1154. And also, you will uh, know the terminologies of Brisbane also. And uh, you should know the terminologies. Lymph node of muscagny is removed in which surgery? Discussed earlier in the class. Yes, it is a very simple straightforward question. And uh, yeah, the other name for muscagny is lymph node of Lund. Lymph node of Lund is located where? Kellar's triangle. That, and then obviously it becomes laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Very simple straightforward answer. The, the Submission 21st edition, page number 1870. The useful landmark of cystic artery is overlying lymph node called Kellogg's node. To minimize the bile duct injury, a strategy was uh, strategy known as uh, critical view of safety can be employed. So, it is very, very uh, clear. This answer is laparoscopic cholecystectomy. The fluid of choice for child with pyloricinosis. The very same question discussed earlier. And you should not have any problem if you attended this class. All of you, whatever the answer you are given, you please give it. You need to decide whether 0.9 or 0.45. That is very important. And dextrose. Is it 5% dextrose or 10% dextrose? 5D or 10D? That will clearly define. The right answer is 5D 0.9 NACL. Bailey. <laughs> Bailey and Love. Very, 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 very clearly says Bailey and Love. I will read through Bailey and Love, double one five four page number 27th edition. Okay. Hypertrophic pyloristenosis is readily targeted by surgery, but the infant must be adequately rehydrated and hypochloremic, hypokalemic alkalosis corrected. And this may be 48 hours if the chloride is 85 millimoles per liter or lower. And if the babies, in most babies, the dehydration and alkalosis are, can be corrected by giving 150 to 180 ml per kg per day of point. 9% saline with 0.15% KCL in 5% glucose. Is it okay? 0.9% saline, 5% glucose and 0.15% KCL. There is 20 milli equivalents of case. Is this question not word to word taken from Bailey and Love? The very same slide, you go back to our app. And see in Bailey based classes under stomach, infantile hypertrophic pyloricinosis, you will find the same explanation there also. 10 year old child with renal mass, drug of choice, 101 times discussed. What is your answer? Adjuvant chemotherapy, the most important drug is Vincristin. Whatever might be the stage, Vincristin, yes, actinomycin D, okay. And adriamycin. Correct? These are the triple drugs that are taken up for adjuvant treatment as an adjuvant treatment for Wilms tumor. Okay? So, vincristin, adriamycin, yes, vincristin, actinomycin D, and adriamycin, triple drugs, triple drug regimen. Ideal parameter to measure cardio respiratory reserve during preoperative assessment. What is the ideal parameter to measure the cardio respiratory reserve during pre-op? Yes, it is an exercise tolerance test. It is a straightforward question. And it has been very well dealt in uh, Bailey and Love in page number 1154, 27th edition. Cardio pulmonary exercise testing provides cardio pulmonary exercise testing provides non-invasive assessment. Combined pulmonary, cardiac and circulatory functions. 
So one thing which I want to tell all of you attending and who have started preparing for this year. Point number one, be regular for your classes. And the classes in general surgery will be on Tuesdays, Wednesday and Thursday. And classes on specialities will be there on weekends. So primarily if you are starting now, you have to start preparing based on your interest. The concept you should have is, you should fix the speciality first. Fix the speciality first. Whether you want to take a SGE or urology or plastic surgery or neurosurgery or surgical oncology or a cardiothoracic surgery or a pediatric surgery, whatever you want to do, you just fix it in your mind. Your primary exam should be an institute exam. Understand this. Your primary exam should be any SS where AIMS, PGI, JIPMAR, NIMANS, STRATHRENAL, all participating as a common exam. That should be your priority. That should be your number one. That should be your number one aim. And so for that you need to prepare a particular speciality. Don't feel that I may not be eligible, I don't have the capacity to prepare for that. Okay? So do not get into those thought process. Always feel that you should prepare for high standard exam and you should always prepare for your specialty exam. For that anyway, you have to prepare for general surgery also. So prepare both. Prepare specialty and general surgery, give any SS. Then also give NEAT SS. And as a preparation common for both, you should definitely give a try for both and get the best possible rank and sit of your choice. And hopefully it is there, it is good for students that two exams will benefit the students if it is conducted in the mid-year. Okay, let us finish these questions and discuss more general aspects. Tumor with BRCA mutation associated with the two options recollected on the day of exam. That's what I have it today right now with me. BRCA2 associated with colon cancer, BRCA1 and 2 with ovarian cancer. Yes, the right answer is BRCA1 and 2 associated with ovarian cancer. See, fixing a speciality will help. Suppose if you are interested in SG, if you prepare for any SS, okay, if you prepare for any SS, you prepare SG plus general surgery. Anyway, you will prepare complete general surgery. So, preparation of this general surgery will definitely help you for neat SS. So, preparing for SG as a specialty will help you to write an any SS and make your chances to appear in institute and get an admission in an institute. Not only that, when you go to your MCH program, you will not have any time to read. You will have time only to work. So, by that time, it will help you, by the time it will help you to concentrate more on cutting rather than the learning on books and you have in-depth knowledge on that. Of course, the pattern has changed. I don't know how I will not know it. Come on Guru Charan, what is this? Yes, they say 150 questions of NEET SS. Yes, in 40 question, in 40 question, today in general surgery they ask on pediatric surgery. This exam pattern is not stable yet. This exam pattern is not stable yet. So, you need to master general surgery, no doubt. What will be asked out of general surgery, only examiner knows. So, the general surgery expanded 40 to 150. Yes, you should be thorough on Bailey and Subistan. That is preliminary, primary. Anyway, by joining here, you will be mastering it. There is no doubt about it. Uh, what I am telling you is, also prepare for any SS. Don't be under a mindset that I will prepare only for neat SS. That's what I am trying to tell you now. Don't be downgrade yourself or depress yourself and put yourself that need is a broader exam that will prepare only for that. No. Prepare for both because preparation for both, yes, will have an added advantage for you. Yes, you will be eligible for two exams and preparing of your speciality, you will concentrate more and you will be able to prepare that particular speciality very well. When you are MCH, you can't read, you will not have any time and it will be very appropriate to know this before the exams. Nobody knows. 150 anything they can give. I am telling you. 150 anything they can give. No control on that. 
and uh, and uh, any a, any kind of questions can come in 150 yes i mean that's also the proposed new pattern right 150 is a proposed new pattern yes and any set will have this time it had almost 30 questions 25 to 30 questions from general surgery and 50 questions were uh, from speciality so far any ss is uh, now fixed exam yes and need it has to evolve new pattern has to happen we should know what is going to happen in new pattern and then after one or two years it will get fixed correct until then we should not have one options that's what i'm trying to tell you you have to prepare then better prepare for general surgery and one speciality that will be the safest option i'm telling you yes that will be the safest and safest bet okay so in case last minute they change the pattern suppose somebody is putting a case again and somebody is making a again a change comes as a old pattern of 60 40 somebody can say in any ss it is both speciality and general surgery and neat ss is only general surgery it becomes difficult for student to prepare for both and both the exam has to be in the same pattern somebody is going to put a case tomorrow i am telling you suppose somebody does there any possibility in this country anything can happen then last minute you cannot go and read one speciality again that's what i'm trying to tell you until the exams are happening nobody will know what's going to happen yes see one student there are two different exams it should not be that way right one student either aims also conducts the same button as neat ss so the preparation remains the same exams can be multiple now aims unfortunately <laughs> aims unfortunately cannot conduct a general surgery exam because they have an interview in speciality so they cannot pick up students that way so they will always have a speciality in a hold so now they are, the, the, the bifurcation of students into two broader perspectives of those students going to institute those going to uh, need and it's a very confusion it's a confusing process of preparation okay and again there will be some issues on this and i will always when you start a preparation prepare broadly yes anyway you are interested in particular speciality devote some time what devote some time in the evening the classes are going to happen anyway listen to that and see the recorded videos slowly over a period of time you will get used to it passive learning general surgery anyway you have to learn for both the exams correct by default so additionally you read one more speciality that you love what is wrong okay so this is my advice at the end of the day you will decide but if i were you i will definitely uh, uh, love to take a course in an institute yes because that will have a very broader exposure so you should definitely aim for that always aim for higher that is good for everyone yes so i always advise you good perspective and uh, ambitious learning that will give you more rewards okay okay then let's go ahead so is this question answered yes it should be and for freshers and newcomers you can have my number if you have any personal doubts on anything you can contact my number double four six eight six nine eight four hundred double four six eight six anything that you want to personally chat with me and you want some clarification and motivation and uh, strategization you definitely call me i'll help you and assist you on that okay so braca1 uh, gene is discovered in 1994 it is now known that mutation of braca1 associated with 40 percent of familial breast cancer a second susceptible gene braca2 was discovered in 1995 in addition to being an increased risk of breast cancer women with mutation of braca1 and braca2 are an increased risk of ovarian cancer 45 percent lifetime risk for braca1 carriers okay so all this will be uploaded in the app okay 1870 21st edition a newborn with a difficulty in breathing ruling of saliva scaphoid abdomen ultrasound shows absence of gastric air bubble options were esophageal stenosis pan esophageal atresia with tof tof option c d esophageal atresia with tof or was the question correct you tell me that first then we'll go on to the answer so all your answers were option b correct but the option which i want to tell you is option d why see if it's only going to be a drooling of saliva and scaphoid abdomen and absence of uh, gastric air bubble that's okay but 
you see a respiratory difficulty why there should be difficulty in breathing so that, that is a point there is a point here that means there is a communication only then this newborn has a difficulty in breathing correct am i right so whatever might be there was a respiratory difficulty in the question was it there or not that means there is a fistula am i right there is a fistula atresia with fistula see this type why can't be this type not this type this type cannot be because there is no gastric bubble so atresia with the fistula and it can be this is it okay acceptable because all this cannot be because there is absence of gastric air bubble one this is not a possibility because this will not have a respiratory difficulty but this is a this is a sure possibility for this question do you accept this is it okay respiratory distress will be there difficulty will be there whether it is mild or moderate or severe is immaterial difficulty will be there right trochotomy as i goes vein preserving approach is done for to of to protect so the right answer is option b decrease the congestion excellent okay so simple straight forward question so again given in submission 21st edition page number 1719 so i'm moving on to the next question child with anorectal malformation meconium seen in a single opening in the scrotum in the midline next step the answer should be answer should be b because this is again the same question of a clavicular anomaly and you will not do a prone table x ray because already it has been diagnosed as anorectal malformation and cross table endoplasty will not do because this is not a low anomaly it's an high anomaly have you answered all your queries prone table x ray only to diagnose an arm it's already diagnosed as arm the question itself says is an arm then why do you want to do again to confirm it's an arm not required right and your clinical examination has made you see a meconium in a single opening opening in a scrotal in the midline correct so it is towards a high anomaly type of a clavicular anomaly possibility no when you when you when you when you when you know it's an anorectal malformation you will know it's high or low we classify arm only by that both the diag once you make a diagnosis you don't make it separate that's so why i'm telling you already you have made a diagnosis in arm already it is diagnosed it is given in the question okay Submission 21st edition page number 1862 newborn male anorectal malformation perineal inspection okay 20 to 24 hours supine ultrasound urine analysis rule out esophageal atresia look into sacrum sp spinal cardiac echo reevaluation and cross table lateral phlegm okay perineal fistula anoplasty rectal gas below the coccyx no associated defects consider psa rp with or without colostomy rectal gas above the coccyx associated with defects abnormal sacrum flat bottom colostomy here it says cross table lateral phlegm but what is given in the question is you see this the question says prone table x ray both are different no if the question is given as what is given in the explanation like this okay cross table lateral phlegm you see this option and this option were the same in the exam was it given a cross table uh, lateral phlegm in the exam was the lateral was lateral there in the option in the exam if the option said cross table lateral phlegm and that will be the answer was this there in the option in the exam or not if this was given this will go as an answer okay if it is given there is answer and here it is evident that being a cloacal you need to go for a colostomy better other option is high sigmoidostomy cross table lateral phlegm see here according to subsistent this is the algorithm you need to follow see perineal fistula if it is a low anomaly you do an anoplasty yeah not for a high anomaly so you need to 
you need to uh, recollect what exactly is given in the uh, exam and accordingly you will answer. Cross table lateral film option goes straight there. If not, this looks like a high anomaly, it should go for a colostomy. The better option here is a high sigmoidostomy. There is reasoning for answer here. The ratio of plasma platelets RBC necessitation. General surgery question. Yes, 1 is 2, 1 is 2, 1. Semester 21st edition, page number 21, very, very clearly says, discussed earlier, based on the moderate evidence, when red cells are transfused for an active hemorrhage, it is best to match each red cell unit with one unit of FFP and one of platelets. So, 1 is 2, 1 is 2, 1. This will reduce the incidence and severity of subsequent dilutional coagulopathy. Very, very uh, clearly said. Patients on warfarin, all are correct except the right, an right answer is INR less than 1.5. Submission 21st edition, page number 202, warfarin half-life is 36 to 42 hours and should be discontinued 5 days before elective procedure and PT INR check on the day of surgery, INR remains above 1.5. Potassium K or fresh frozen plasma can be administered pre depending on the extent of the coagulopathy and operative planning because it takes usually 4 to 5 days of warfarin to, to attain therapeutic levels of anticoagulation. Restarting warfarin within 24 hours of surgery uh, will result in an average 8 to 9 days of sub-therapeutic anticoagulation during the preoperative period. So, when used in the setting of uh, bleeding treatment, unfractionated heparin should be stopped 4 to 6 hours before surgery, while uh, low molecular heparin should be stopped 24 hours before surgery for operation with a high risk of bleeding, therapeutic uh, low dose uh, molecular low dose low molecular weight heparin should be resumed 40 to 72 hours post operatively. Okay. So, the right answer should be option A. Is it okay? Least common type of TOF. Was this question asked? So, the Schwartz 11th edition, page number 1717, most common variety will be type C. And uh, next most frequent will be type A, 8 to 10 percent, followed by type E. This occurs in 8 percent of cases also referred to as H type of fistula based upon the anatomical similarity of the latter. Eusophageal atresia with fistula between both the proximal and distal lanes of the esophagus of the trachea type D is seen in approximately 2 percent of cases and type B esophageal atresia with the tracheoesophageal fistula between distal esophagus and trachea is seen in 1 percent of cases. So, the right answer will be type B. Is it okay? Okay, a head injury with LOC, lucid interval with temporal bone fracture diagnosis, very straightforward question. Yes, very, very straightforward question. The right answer is EDH, extradural hemorrhage. So, 334, 27th edition of Bailey, 334, page number. Okay, so this is the first set of uh, questions we have discussed and uh, in upcoming session we will discuss uh, rest of the questions which were asked in exam and that will give you a fairly good idea from where it is picked up and how they are picked up and uh, by that uh, it will be easy for you to uh, go through the sessions based out of this. Okay. Thank you and anything that you have any uh, doubts further you can uh, WhatsApp my number and I will clarify you for the doubts in that. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend and see you soon with the rest of the classes. Thank you very much.